we need to give them something that they probably don't know that these people look for experience that okay i see that in futures 101 i know a little bit on my own now what am i missing what's the missing pieces that that can now find in the 2.0 but i think if trump wins which again it will be crazy if he doesn't because the polls are now showing like 60 40. if he doesn't win i don't know what the market would do because i think the market is probably pricing in that he wins <laughs> we, we're not gonna we're not gonna say your baby's name yet right we're not gonna give that away yet no no we won't we won't give it do you know okay. it yet do you, do you know i it? think you told me i think i remember i'm not gonna say it right now because i don't want to yeah, blast yeah, okay. it yeah. hopefully amanda doesn't come watch this part because i'm not supposed to give the name out then i won't be making baby number two so hopefully she hasn't watched this part <laughs> hopefully not, hopefully not. <laughs> Let's talk about how much Peter Brandt hates prop firms. Ah. He's gonna he's gonna give himself a heart attack. This guy's so old he's gonna <laughs> fucking croak over because all he's doing is writing t paragraphs, tweeting about yeah. how much he thinks everyone's a scam. C Dakota from Top Step passes series something, and then yeah, you're a scam. Sure. Like and he just goes off. On What's up, traders? Welcome to the Day Trading Show. My name is Austin Silver. I'm your host, and today we've got a home team episode. James and Evan are here with me to talk about ASFX TV's newest course, Futures 2.0. This is the follow-up to our super successful Futures 101, the free course we put out earlier this year. This is a more advanced deep dive into the VWAP trading strategies that we have. You're going to hear all about it in today's podcast. So if you're interested, we've got links in the description for the free trial. Definitely check that out. We talk about a lot of other shit too. It's not just about the course. James has some out-of-pocket comments that are uh, funny, of course, to say the least. And we talk about the plans going into 2025. We've got an event coming up in Dallas. We've got a lot of stuff cooking for you guys. So for our loyal fans, for our loyal listeners, I think you're going to love this episode. So enough out of me. Links in the description for everything we talk about and for our sponsors. Of course, a big thank you to them. And now enjoy this home team episode with James Bruce and Evan Dyer. a fuck ton of money, bro. This podcast wouldn't be possible without Top One Trader. If you're looking to get funded and trade CFDs, check out the link in the description. I've also got a discount code that's going to save you 40% on your next challenge, maybe a little bit more. The code is ASFX. Use the link, check it out, and good luck in getting funded. And thank you to Top One for sponsoring the episode. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. We've got a home team episode for the first time. Literally, I'm looking at this schedule of who we've had on. It's like a year, more than a year. We've done individual stuff. We did the thing in London in December, James, and then Ev, we were in New York in April, and we've done other videos, but the three of us together hasn't happened in so long. So this is now long overdue. I feel like I should have been more planned. There's probably so many things we have to talk about, but we are excited, everybody. If you're uh, listening into the podcast or maybe you're driving to work or hanging out with your fam, we are very excited to announce that Futures 2.0 is out now, at the time of listening to this, you finally can get access to Futures 2.0. We released it a week early on ASFX TV just to make sure everything was good. Now on ASFX TV, it is public for everyone. So whether you're a member or a non-member, you got to check out Futures 2.0. Evan and myself, I got to give Evan a lot of credit. Evan's put in a ton of hours into this course. I mean, I've helped, but Evan really did all the legwork on this thing. So we're going to talk about that today. Bruce, I feel like we got to talk about the baby Coming up, we got to talk a little bit about Edgeful. So we've got a lot to talk about, everybody. I appreciate you being here. If uh, you're a listener to our home team episodes, you know, we do, like I said, individual interviews sometimes, but these home team episodes are for the true ASFX fans and the true ASFX fam. So before I open the door to uh, some questions here, we have an event coming up in January. At the time of this coming out, tickets were all, will be on sale, will also be on sale for that event. So if you'd like to come to Dallas, I'm only selling 25 tickets. Evan is going to be there. Unfortunately, James is not going to be there. Zach from ASFX TV is going to be there, as well as potentially some guest speakers that are uh, extremely high caliber traders. So we're looking forward to getting a really good group of people together in Dallas. It's a two day boot camp. We're going to do education and live trading. We're going to basically run it like a live trading floor in person for two days where you're learning, dialoguing, FAQ, like the whole thing, panel discussion, really to get you guys understanding how we work, how we trade, and, uh, also, it's a great opportunity to meet and network with some other traders. So 
All right, that's my intro. Man, I'm looking forward to so much. We got so much to talk about. This is so fucked because we should have done a home team episode between <laughs> now and the last fucking year, but here we are, boys. Yeah, it's, it's, it has been a while, that's for sure. I mean, last time we did a one with me, I was getting married and now all of a sudden I'm uh, having a kid. So I don't mess around, man. And I don't <laughs> mess around, that's for sure. You know what's going to be crazy? Not to go to a tangent for a second, but dude, five years from now, these videos will still be on YouTube. You'll, know, you'll send it. Cool. We, we're not gonna we're not gonna say your baby's name yet, right? We're not gonna give that away yet. No, no, we won't. We won't give it. Do you know okay. it yet? Do you, do you know? I it? think you told me. I think I remember. I'm not gonna say it right now because I don't want to yeah, blast yeah, okay. it. Okay, but okay, it'll be cool for the the the, the children, your kids, my kids, Evan's kids. Eventually, you come back and see these videos. It'll be really cool because, like, I yeah. think about how cool it would be to see my dad back in the day doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? So it'll be yeah. super cool for them to hear this. Yeah. Um, Agreed. But, hopefully, but yeah. hopefully Amanda doesn't come watch this part because I'm not supposed to give the name out. Then I won't be making baby number two. So hopefully she hasn't watched this part. <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully not. Um, all right, let's talk about the course first. Ev, let's get into this. Give yep. everybody your thoughts for a second. Give us a little rant if you can about what it was like building this course and also building it with me because I think a lot of people know me as the guy that's had courses in the past with anything we've ever done. So you kind of had me over your shoulder the whole time. So can you talk to us about that process? Yeah, it was definitely a nice learning curve for myself. Like I wanted to make one. I feel like I have enough knowledge to put it out, but I can't lie. I needed your help in terms of making it look pretty, sound pretty, right? Like the way to format it, the way to make it flow, because I could just spam it all across a bunch of slideshows, but it's not going to really be like a nice chapter thorough book or like a nice course. So I didn't need your help in that regard. Of course, I felt like I knew what I wanted to touch on, what people wanted to know about my strategy, everything that we do on the day-to-day -day that they see me trade on ASFX TV, but on there, it could be very quick, very, oh, you probably already know what I do. You've been here last time, but this is like, well, if someone's never seen me, how would I not dumb it down, but how would I really walk them through it slowly? So it was a good challenge for myself. It wasn't easy to just to, oh, wow, that took me like three hours and I'm done, even though it may be like three or four hours of content. It took a lot longer than that to think of what parts should be in it, what parts maybe aren't necessary, because it is the more advanced one to your futures 101, which is also important stuff. But I was like, well, that was already touched on. We need to give them something that they probably don't know, that these people look for experience that, okay, I see that in futures 101. I know a little bit on my own. Now, what am I missing? What's the missing pieces that they can now find in the 2.0? Very well said. Yeah. So for everyone listening, if you haven't seen Futures 101, that is also on ASFX TV for free. That you do not need to be a member to watch. That's like a great introduction. If you're switching from Forex to Futures still, if, you, if you're a little late on that, or maybe you're just new to Futures in general, it's a great place to start. And then the assignment for Evan was really to build something that gave people more meat. We didn't want to co cover new concepts. That's why it was you know, really good to have Evan on this. Even like James, I don't think, no, no knocking you, bro, but I don't think you could have done this as well as Evan because he's d diving deeper specifically on key concepts in Futures 101. And because James, you trade a little bit differently, I don't yeah. think you, that anyone could have done it as good as Evan. That's why this like worked out really, really well. And I've never done anything like this even when I was at the prop firm in New York and even before that, like I've never had anything where we put out a course for free and then have a more advanced course behind the paywall to get people to say, okay, now I want to trade with these guys. I want to take more. So I think we have it set up now to be like a really good funnel to kind of get people that like the way we operate to get them to us. And then it's cool because then they come in maybe through Futures 101 or Futures 2.0 and then they see your trading, James, and they see you on stream, I hope, and then they maybe like you and then maybe – so imagine that. And then maybe they want to learn from you more uh -huh. than they do. A lot of the guys are now doing, I feel like a combination of the way you see the charts yeah. with the VWAP stuff. Cause now you still have VWAP in there. So it's like everybody learning from each other. It sets us up to have a really, really solid platform. So now you're streaming three times a week, Bruce. How are you liking that yeah. New York session? Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching the futures co uh, course too. I don't know. Abe's put a lot of work and time into that too. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, South Africans, we banned from future. So we, you know, definitely wouldn't be able to do, do as good of a job as Ev. So a hundred percent. But yeah, I think it's going to be a good, uh, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be good. I'm streaming three times a week on ASFX after Ev and, and Austin on Wednesdays through to Fridays, but I think it's going to be creating a different uh, type of vibe to ASFX TV to more, more uh, substance. That's yeah, word. definitely. You know, yeah. when Ed, when you were building it, what was the hardest part? Probably what was the most difficult part. Yeah, probably the recording of it. Honestly, as silly as that is, <laughs> so like what uh, part of that? Like talking too fast, not saying the right words, fumbling. Yeah, what like, were you doing? Just, yeah, James, trying you should have to... heard this, bro. In the edits, because I cut the final oh, videos. It. 
you you hear him talking to himself. He like curses himself out. He's like, all right, just just redo that. But he, it's funny because he's he thought we were going to send it to our video team, but I decided to just be the one yeah. that cut it because I had to. So he's talking to Jay, but really it's me. So it's just funny. <laughs> but go ahead, Ed. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because like the reason I'm building it is that I have the information. I know the knowledge and all the things I want to put in it. So like typing it out, putting it out there, like I do that every day, like on my coaches calls on the streams. But now like in a format. And maybe a different format in a clear, concise way. That was the more challenging way where they're not going to be like right in my ear to ask me a question immediately. So like, I need them to try to understand the best they can the first time through. Of course, you're probably going to have to watch it two or three times. But it's like if they're just alone and they listen to me and they read it, could they they get it better than like, wait, what is it? Can you clarify that again real quick? Because no, I'm not there. So I just it's a good practice for you. Because you have to think yeah. about like what are they thinking? What question yeah. might they have? Oh, let me jump ahead of that and get get that answered for them before they even get a chance to ask me. Mm -hmm. So it makes you sharper too. I think it makes you, like you said, explain the concepts more clearly to avoid even having questions mm -hmm. then. like Yeah, because it all makes wrong. sense to me what I'm saying. But again, right. it's not for me. So I right. had to just yeah. make sure that, and again, like I said, the recording of it, just because I did want it to be nice and clean and then one, th one shot through, but it didn't happen that way. You know, I, I th <laughs> yeah. let's, this is, this is, you know, when we get to these podcasts, I want you guys to always be authentic because I think that's what the listeners really resonate with me, with the guests and stuff. I'll be honest. I think one of the the only holes in it, and it's to me, it's not a hole, but I think people are going to say, oh, it's like four and a half hours. I thought it would be longer. I'm wondering if we're going to get any feedback like that. But to me, it's like, why would you want eight hours if you can get it in four? You know, you're paying for the knowledge, not paying to waste yeah. time, right? Yeah, it doesn't really matter how long it is if it's, just filled with garbage and fluff. I'd rather be like the most important talking points. This is how long it took. I mean, and I'll tell you, I mean, maybe people disagree with this, but for me, even listening to you, like I couldn't sit there and watch all four hours as I like reviewed it. I couldn't do it straight because I start to tune you out. You know what I'm saying? Like hearing your tone of voice not change yeah. too often and you're just going through your thing. It's like, hold on, I got to stop. I got to process. So like, it's not like you're going to just watch four hours, five hours of video and get it. It's like, you got to watch an hour, process that. Maybe like you said, rewatch a couple of times specific areas too. Cause it's easy to tune something out. At least for me, that's my lack of comprehension. Maybe. I mean, no, I'm not sure. the smartest. Yeah. So, and then your mid chapter and like your phone goes off. You're obviously going to probably check Boom. it. Boom. Focus like, gone. Okay, that was yeah. six minutes that There's I missed. There's studies done, bro, on like how long people can keep focus nowadays. And it's like less than 90 seconds. You know what I'm saying? Before their brain yeah. wants to go somewhere else. It's crazy. Yeah. That's thanks to TikTok. Or really it anything. Is. Yeah. Thanks, China. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, let's go into a different direction for a second away from Futures 2.0. What'd you guys think of the Joe Rogan, Donald Trump episode? 24 million views in 24 hours. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. I will, Not even uh... on Spotify. He he's gonna win. He won last time. Let's just put that out there. I mean, he 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 did, and he's gonna win again. I mean, it, it it's impossible. Yeah, I just is just my. Imagine if he doesn't, bro. No, he that it's. Well, I think you mean he should win. Yeah, like, he, should, he, so should, he should. Yeah, win. the so odds, the numbers. Win. Yeah, big big rally today mm -hmm. in Madison Square Garden. Like, there's this no is, way. There's, she, she's fake. like if, nowhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is just my opinion, but and maybe it can be a little bit more harsh, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I don't think a woman should be in charge of the most powerful nation on, on earth. So that's just my opinion. But uh, Controversial take from Bruce there. <laughs> I think there's going to be people that agree. I think there'll be people that disagree. I think it's it's to me, it's all about like Trump has experience. Like why do people come into our program? They want the experience. They may not agree with everything you and me and, and Evan say, but they want the experience. Well, I want someone with experience. You know what I'm saying? And I like the fact that he is an outsider now with experience. The first time he ran, I didn't vote for him because he was an outsider. It was hard to get bought in on him. You didn't know a lot. But now you see even the people he has around him. It's like if you don't vote for him, like you're saying you don't like Elon Musk. You're saying you don't like RFK. You're saying you don't like Tulsi. You're saying you like you don't like all these people that I kind of think are smart. So, yeah, it seems really tough. But you know what, bro? It's fucking, it's in Evan's states that they're going to try to sway the vote in the cities and stuff like that, you know, where they're going to try to well, flood the vote. Yeah. I just think the everyone needs to go vote. That's what I say in America. I don't know how it is in South Africa, but here I just tell everybody, go vote. As long as you vote, yeah. you can talk. If you uh, don't vote, don't, you know. You, you no, know, if you don't vote, if you don't vote, you don't, you shouldn't be able, you can't complain. I agree. The reason I say that about the why I don't think women should be in charge of the most powerful nation is, is simple. is because back in the day, who went to war? Men, men, right? Women don't go to war. We, we have to get down on our knees and get the dirty shit done and make the tough decisions. So it's, 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 that's a fact. 
It's fucking facts, bro. I mean, there's a reason that the there's not any like who's the woman version of Genghis Khan? There's not. You know what I'm saying? Like Napoleon. There's no female Napoleon. It's been men. Yeah. Men conquer. You know. And also, Trump is a really good deal maker. He's not the smartest guy. He, he puts smart people around him, but he's good at yes. and like you said, in that position of power, you definitely need to be a good deal maker. Why are you staying yes. quiet, Evan? Evan yeah, doesn't I mean, want to ruffle feathers. No, I think it's honestly like <laughs> people don't you know people don't honestly understand that like the country is a business. Like everything that comes in and out is all for money for someone's pocket. That it's just a big business and who would I want who knows how to clearly run a business at the highest level, multiple businesses, and even in his age, just the experience of it, where with her just even if she was very smart, which I don't think she is at all, she just never ran businesses like that, which is what it takes and which is why people liked him the exactly. first time. Of like, yeah, it's like how to negotiate, which is what a leader yeah. needs to do. And he has all yeah. these sales tactics. Like, it is applicable to the, being a president, even though you think it's, no, he needs to be a politician. It's like, no, he needs to be able to sway people and sell them and pitch them new ideas. Yeah. Well, what, do you have any interesting takeaways from the podcast? Anything that he said that was interesting or funny well, that stands I out? Yeah, sorry. Go, go ahead. I was just uh, watching clips of it. I still haven't seen the full thing, but I feel like I've seen majority of it. I liked when he was talking about uh, if if she did the podcast, she'd be on the floor over yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> comatose. It's, 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 <laughs> instead of saying comatose, he kind of said comatose, like yeah. comatose. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, yeah. is that another layer of the joke? Does he think he's that funny? Yeah, dude, but that was funny. I think he honestly yeah. wants her to do it because he knows it would be bad and hurt her. He's like, I hope he does it. <laughs> it would be the, bad. The, the the irritating part for me, and this is why I kind of like Trump now, is 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 simple. Is that before he started, he's being a politician. He was a great, he's a great businessman. Whether you like Trump or not, he's been able, he's a great businessman, right? He's been able to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And before that, um, Whoopi Goldberg, he was saying this in, I've only watched the first hour, I still need to finish it. But in the first hour, he was saying that Whoopi Goldberg, uh, Oprah, all of them used to give him a hug and kiss and love him and everything like that. And then all of a sudden, as soon as he became a Republican, they were like, basically, F you. That irritates me. And that's why I would like Trump even more because it's like, if there's something up there, bro. Like if you all of a sudden love someone and you just turn your back on them because they don't side with you on the same, it, that's a bit weird for me. And that's why. I think that's another great point. He talked about, yeah, Ev, you got to watch it so you can hear the full thing. It's like the thing James is talking about, he said um, that they, they found it and the clip is on Twitter now of like, he went right. on the view and they yeah. loved him. And they, and then look at how they talked about him as soon as he became a Republican, which is interesting yeah. to say the least. I agree with you, James. I think it's weird. I, it makes me believe that the idea of like Trump derangement syndrome or like being yes. with the party doesn't matter who the person is. Those ideas of like, I'm going to commit to this one party, doesn't matter yes. who represents those ideas. That's ridiculous. That's just closed minded. It's not being willing to change, you know? And that's why I think a lot of people I saw on Twitter were saying like, I know two moderates from Vermont and they watch the Trump and Joe Rogan and they're going to vote for Trump. So I think that hopefully three hours of him talking like a normal person, people see that a lot of the things the media says about him are wrong. And that's what Joe yeah. started the whole podcast out with was it's, basically just saying how yeah. the media Hacked him crazier than anybody else. Yeah, yeah. And bro, he used to be the man. Last thing about Trump, let's go. No, yeah. They yeah. used to rap about Trump. <laughs> he was in the rap songs. He was cool with all the celebrities. He yeah. was the man. Yeah. But have they, you they seen put, them? He had like the most cameos in movies. Yes, yeah. he was even on Home Alone, our childhood uh, you know, movie. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, even what cool, was cool is like, you know, Livion Bull and um, uh, and Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown. Like, Livion Bull came and made like a three minute long video saying Trump is cool, dog. Like literally. And it was like, if you don't like Trump, you're just being a hater, basically. And, and yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. We'll see. So now to tie it to markets, it's an interesting place to be on the indices, right? Like near all time highs yeah. going into an election. This will be something that, all, I mean, I've been through an election before while, while I was trading, just really 2020, 2016, I wasn't, yeah. I wouldn't say I was trading yet. So like, and and just being in markets around elections is super interesting. So I think uh, we're in for it, for some volatility going into the election maybe, and even after the election. But I think if Trump wins, which again, it will be crazy if he doesn't because the polls are yeah. now showing like 60, 40. If he doesn't win, I don't know what the market would do because I think the market is probably pricing in that he wins. What do you guys think? 
Real quick, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Edgeful. You've probably heard me talk about Edgeful if you watch my streams on ASFX TV. Basically, they are your one-stop shop for all the data that you need to find a little bit of an edge when you're trading in the market. Whether it's crypto, stocks, futures, or Forex, they've got you covered. Andre and his team are constantly adding new reports to give you new edges and answer questions like, for example, I really liked Edgeful because they showed the opening range breakout stats, where we can get a pretty good idea if we break the range to one side, what's the likelihood we break the range to the top or the bottom, vice versa. So when you have these data-driven questions, like I said, you need data-driven answers. And Edgeful takes care of that for you. So check out the link in the description, check out Edgeful, or come see me on ASFX TV using Edgeful, and you'll see how we actually take those data points and turn them into real edge in the market. Now let's get back to the video. And they probably are pricing that he wins, um, at least for the time being a little bit swaying towards that. But if they don't, it really is tough to say of how that would react. Of Could they still have the power to make a new all-time high somehow, some way, just to carry the momentum of just how strong everything else has been. But again, you don't know the reaction that would be if he honestly did lose. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, I think that's what I'm saying. It would be a very big surprise. It's just like, oh, yeah. I, I could have seen both of them winning. Yeah, it's a tough loss. It's like, no. Ah, no. no way that just happened. So, like, what's everyone's reaction now? Yeah. What do you think, Bruce? Yeah, uh, 100%. I mean, we, we, I'm just trying to check the Bitcoin price at the moment. But I think uh, I think the markets are definitely pricing. And I'll be, it'll be, a, you know, I think Trump is great for, for you know, for, for stocks, for indexes. So I think it's going to create even more if even more opportunities for us as day traders and long-term investors uh, in the markets. Uh, again, Trump is a businessman. He's he's not, uh, you know, he's he's created so many you know other businesses before. I think he's going to be great for, for intraday traders, to be honest. Yep. One tweet can send a send a few uh, ripples mm -hmm. across the market. And that's what yeah. I'm saying. When he like when he would tweet about like the China war, trade war and tariffs, the market would yep. move on that stocks oh, yeah. like small like small stocks in certain sectors would even move based on what he would say. Yep. Yeah, his policies are interesting economics wise because if you think about like he's going to try to do more drilling in, in the United States, which will lower the price of gasoline, lower reliance on China. I think he'll try to bring back manufacturing. How much of that does he actually bring back? We'll see. But it seems like from what he's preaching, it will be good for Americans, which hopefully just increases income and inflation doesn't go too crazy because yeah. wages haven't been able to keep up with inflation. So now wages need to catch up. So if we can somehow figure that out, you don't necessarily yeah. have to make everything cheaper if you make everybody richer. And I think that would be – that's right. kind of like the Trump angle. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if you create more things locally, you're creating more jobs, maybe wages go up. Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, uh, it's going to be interesting. I mean, yep. ho yeah. I mean, we obviously had that the other day, the massive strike on the ports, you know, on the Gulf. So yeah, thank God that ended. That was that could yeah. be bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, and, what's up? and just for those, just for those yeah. listening, the reason, the reason that we're speaking politics and that I think you're being delusional, naive, at least if you think that politics and trading don't go together. Oh, that, dude, that's especially yeah. two weeks out of an election. Come on. Yeah. So yeah. If they, I would hope that if they had a problem with politics, they're not going to even follow us at this point. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because it's always going to come up. <laughs> That's true. It's, it's yeah. impossible to, in, in today's climate, it's like, if people think about it, I would guess they only hang around people now that have the same politics as them, which like for our parents, spe like especially you and me, Ev, in the States, that was not how it was. You had friends and then friends just didn't talk politics all the time and it was fine. Now it's just so intertwined. It's like, yeah, if you don't agree or you hate me for thinking the way I do, it's like we're not going to get along most likely now. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, so it's a lot more stubborn and like, oh, that's who you are then. That's your idea. Right. That's you. It's not just, right. oh, that's what, okay, that's who you're voting for now. It's just like, that's who you are. I was talking I know to everything this guy. about you based off of who you're voting for. That's really what people think. I was talking to this guy in California. In, uh, there was a trader meetup what is two days ago at uh, a place in Tampa. Nick set up, Nick Stewart. So all these people flew in. Some guy from Germany flew in. It was a good amount of people, maybe 15, 20 people. And this kid from California was talking to me. And he was, I think his name was Ricky. And he was asking me, like, why did I move to Florida and blah, blah, blah. And I was, I was talking to him about, like, why are you staying in California? If you say you want to be an entrepreneur and why do you want to stay in California? And he, you know, basically said it's like where he's from and stuff. And and I think family he might have mentioned is there too. So the the overtaxed states, the states that are run poorly, the, like sucks, but it just is what it is. You got to move at least here. I don't know how it is for you, James, but here you move to a state where like even today, DeSantis was on talking about like pot. And he was saying how like people here should be able to buy 
marijuana and smoke it on their own. But the people that don't want to deal with that shouldn't have that on the streets and have to smell it and explain it to their yeah. kids all the time. And like, and just who he's very level headed, you know, taxes here are good. So what I'm saying is like, now in America, it's just going to divide us even more geography wise. You know what I mean? Like if someone lives in California, if they don't leave, you wonder, is it the politics too? You know? Yeah, you got, you guys have it quite interesting there because in South Africa we don't have like in South Africa there's well, it's not like I think there's eight or nine provinces which we well essentially states. states. Uh, so yeah, provinces. But do you have different rules in each province? No, it's a, it's the all same the same rules for the whole country. Um, right. so yeah, they, yeah. So it's the same rule. Yeah, there's nine provinces in South Africa. So yeah. they, uh, you know, I live in uh, when so I do they, up, What do they do for you since you couldn't even remember how many provinces mm -hmm. they were? They probably yeah. hang you. They don't in, do. They don't the do street. anything, bro. It's the same. They don't do anything. It's, I grew up in a province called the Eastern Cape, and then I moved to KwaZulu Natal, where I live now. Uh, it's the province just north of. Spell of, that, of Evan. Cape. No. Yeah, spell, spell <laughs> that. <laughs> so um. Uh, but but for us we have the same rules throughout the whole country same tax rates there's no like state tax and the federal tax it's 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 one flat you know throughout the whole country so it's a little bit different yeah yeah well exciting news we're doing this event in january in dallas evan's coming zach's coming maybe james we do the next event at that new big hotel they're building in balito right did you see this the, the club med no. the club med big fancy yeah, yeah. yeah club med does a good job like all-inclusive hotel yeah so you got to send it to him. Maybe, it looks sick. It's going to be so maybe nice. We can so get, I think uh, we'll do the second. Of, we'll do another event 2026 out there. We'll go to the hotel and just do it there. That'd be exactly. sick. Since James is yeah. never going to leave and come to us, we'll just go to him. Yeah. You know? yeah if you can come wear your, wear your speedo and come on the slides there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are you thinking about Dallas? Have you excited for that? Yeah, I've never been. I never really. Uh... What are you more nervous for? Talking in front of people or getting on the airplane to fly to Dallas? Get in the airplane. <laughs> I don't definitely. care about speaking. Definitely, in front of them. definitely. Yeah, or uh, it'd be good, especially January. It'd be good to get out of the cold in yep. Jersey at that point, as well as just go see Dallas. And then what it's for of going to speak to others about trading that'd be even better. See some, Two days, see the a lot of trading. Well. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna eat good. I mean, dude, the the group we have already from the Blackshirt Club. If Randy's there, it's a good time. If Christine's there, yeah. it's a good time. So it's it's a it's gonna be a fun group for sure. It sucks yeah. you can't come, James. It really does. I I know. Obviously, that's uh, well. First of all, I'm probably having the sun in February. That yeah, yeah so don't February, don't come because Amanda period. will kill yeah. me, bro. Oh shit! Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll we'll do the next one. We'll have to do the next one. But um, I'm looking forward to because we got our passport that should be coming through as well, which will we can just uh, get on a uh, flight and and go the next day. So hopefully that uh, that will be sorted out then too. Yeah, um, yeah. Be good. We'll do I told him one. he's got to come right because he's gonna. We already got it planned. Ev. He's gonna go to Heathrow, right? Johannesburg to Heathrow, Heathrow, Heathrow. to Tampa. Bang. Yeah. He doesn't want to go to Tampa. He wants to Shut see up. the city. He wants He's, to see yeah, the big we, apple. We talked about this. He's like, should I go see Times Square? I was like, no. It's a bunch of, <laughs> bill, it's a bunch of but billboards. I, but I want, I want to be in no. Times Square listening to that movie, that that song. What that song by, what's it? Beyonce? New York? Or, by Alicia yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Concrete Jungle? But yeah, that, I mean that's that's where we that's how you grow up thinking of those type of stuff. If you know, I mean, but then you go see Times it. It's Square. so lame. It's so show lame, the whole bro. city, not just Times Square. No, we we yeah. would. I would definitely say you go to New York too for sure. You got to see it. You know what I'm saying? Like you're around uh, Christmas time when it's a little bit more yeah, cleaned Christmas up. Time. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, when, time. I'll I'll have to protect my bald head at that stage, and then it'll be cold. We can go to we can go to Trump Tower for you, James. We'll go to Trump Boom. Tower. Boom. Get a picture in front. I got gold bathrooms in there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm excited for Dallas, bro. The hotel we have is really, really nice. The room's going to be really, really nice. Like, so we're not going to make a lot of money on it, but that's not the point of doing the event. We're going to get events, so we'll get video content. So that's kind of cool. I think we're going to try to, I'm going to talk to him. If it's in the budget to rent the cameras that we need, I think he might need to rent some. We're going to try to record the whole thing too. So for mm -hmm. people that can't come, yeah. I think we're going to record it, post on ASFX TV for the members. Just keep it, yeah, you know what I mean? Like that's, I think that's a good idea. London. Exactly. Bas yeah. Basically yeah. the same thing. Yeah. The, the London one didn't come out as nice as I wanted it to with the audio and stuff like that. So that's why we learned from that one and we'll make sure this one's crispy, but it'll yeah, be good. Was... And then the two days is going to be different too than London. London was just one day. This is two days from yeah. an hour before market open until market close. And it's nice. education and live trading. Where like when we did the seminar in London, we didn't really do any trading. I don't think, did we? No. No, not no live trade. Well, it was a Saturday when we had it, so there was. Was it Saturday? No it was a Saturday. Yeah. 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 I've done some of them during the week in the past, and still never focused on trading. This one's going to be Friday like watch Saturday, us trade. Was, yeah. Friday. Evan's going to load up no his life. XFAs, fifteen yeah. lots. But, but oh, you, you know something that I've. 
you know something that I've I've noticed since moving over to the indexes. <clears throat> so wow. for those that are watching, uh, also and Ev trade them as futures contracts. I trade them as CFD contracts. It's the same a chart. Everything's the same. I just trade them in a different way of trading them. Right? You can trade them as options. You can trade them as ETFs. Um, but essentially, I'm trading them as CFD contracts. Contracts for difference. And what I've noticed since moving over to indexes, this is is it actually set times that you trade, like from like maybe like nine, you'll trade from 9.30 to 11 or 9.30 to 12, whatever it is. Whereas with currency trading, it's like kind of like the, it's 24.5. So it's like, was you didn't actually know when the markets were going to move. Like you could be trading a whole of London session, but you can move 10 pips, you know? And it's like, yep. well, dude, I just sat there for three and a half hours and nothing's actually happened. But you know, with the indexes that it's actually going to move or indexes and some stocks are going to move during that open time. So which, which I do quite enjoy. I kind of feel stupid for not going to futures sooner, but I don't want to live with regret. You know, mm. it's just kind of a yeah. funny, like I laugh about it, but it's kind of like, it's just a better market for us in the States for sure, I think. So it's like, yeah, yeah I don't but know what. With all of it, I mean, even starting with Forex, say, oh, I can't believe I didn't trade the indices sooner. Like get away from yeah. the forex at least, and then now trading that I was like, I can't believe I was even on that for so long before the no, futures. No, for sure. Yeah, it's not like a, a bunch of my coaching futures. calls. Yeah. I have no idea, but like, who's to say in five now, five years from now, I'm not trading like options or something? I don't know. Yeah, like it was right. never in the cards that I'd be trading futures, so like I don't write anything off. Tbh, say, like, I think you're the smartest one of the three of us, so you probably figure out options better than me or James. It looks James would be like, oh, I bought the call put, but I needed the put call, <laughs> and I was trying to put yeah, my I bought the bought the butterfly puts. Right, right. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. No, I but think I know it was just mean. all. It all led to the experience underneath now. our belt from the previous years to make us ready for the future, so that it was an easy transition. Yeah. But if it's not an easy transition, go check out Futures 101 and Futures. Look at 2. the plugs. Look at the plugs. See, you're getting the good. <laughs> James, we'll be shooting content. Where, where do we? What were you we just talking about, Evan? And I said something, and you were like, "Shit!" Like, because I said it, like I was like telling you how to promote. When I was in Seattle, we were on the phone. Remember? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Riley's trying to make me take her back to Seattle yeah. already in December, bro. I'm gonna have to be working on West Coast time. Up yeah, in December. Just, uh, yeah, yeah. She maybe wants to go Ryan, back in, like, Ryan wants to go with you. He wants to go with you back to those trees. Yeah, those trees, bro. <laughs> the trees. <laughs> yeah, but I, I got to figure out. Like you two, got to give me some advice on. uh external monitor for streaming like how you guys are running the streaming when you're traveling because you both have the monitor now so like yeah, what are you what is, are you putting the stream yard on the screen that you're like to the left basically or the right yes. and then the main screen is just your trading platform and you screen share yep. that yeah. yeah yep it's same as what i'm doing now over here so i've got three monitors here i'm actually thinking of getting a fourth one but i think that might be a bit much threes yeah but um you'll make um, more money I, if you I get more monitors it. Above five. <laughs> five? i put it exactly or lose more <laughs> But um, you, uh, I have it on the right hand side and uh, the, the off the main monitor, and then the streaming goes on the opposite one. Yeah, yeah it definitely yeah. the external monitor makes a big difference. Okay, uh, yeah. thanks. Yeah, so I don't because yeah. I don't want to just try to stream from just the laptop. I would definitely want another screen. Uh, yeah, yeah, because no, you got Streamyard, the actual Asfx TV stream, and then the charger. Yeah, because you want to see like, the chat, right? Yeah, anything. good point. What about uh, and then James? I don't know what we got. Did we get you a microphone? I think so. Yeah, yeah, I'll go, yeah, I'll use this one. No, the other, the other microphone. Is that what you use when you travel? I don't know. When I travel, I use my AirPods. So yeah, there's this. He yeah, it, it sounds okay. I got Zach. If you go watch Zach streams, he's got this new headset. It's okay. very cheap. Maybe, you got to get one. Maybe a headset well, is the is a thing. Yeah. It's a headset with the microphone. The microphone <laughs> sounds well, better, and it. I've seen it. A lot of the streamers actually use headsets and actually even when they're on their main setup. So maybe I, yeah. What's funny is actually we, Zach and I was streaming the other day on Twitter and like literally he started talking like he was mid sentence and then it just cut off and I was like, dude, you, you muted yourself, bro. And then he just, and then he realized the cat bit it. Mm. <laughs> with the cord <laughs> while he was streaming but he didn't want to take his his um you know the headset off because he didn't want to look like an idiot but it was not plugged in but the the, the mark was actually his pc <laughs> that's so funny yeah yeah so his uh, stream starts this week that should be interesting to see yeah one o'clock yeah wednesdays thursdays it'll be good to have anywhere between like three to four hours of streams each day for the bulker days of the week not monday if someone's listening to this, we can tell them, Ev. It's 30 minutes into the podcast. Everybody, listen. Evan's trying to commit uh, Power Hour suicide and pull yep. the plug on Power Hour. He says the numbers <laughs> are just – not only are the numbers not as popping as the New York Open, but also 
the markets are That's slower right. lately. Yeah. yeah, it's boring. Yeah. So he says we're going to get more action at one o'clock in kill zone trading than we will in power hour. So that could just be the substitute. And then maybe we'll pull it if it's still this way. Yeah, well, that will help me a little bit because power hour is about to change to 10 p.m. starting in the evening. That's crazy. Time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you can't be on that, bro. You got to go to bed. You got to stop. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You should be watching yeah. Netflix with Amanda or doing something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, making yeah. baby number two. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so we got the, the conference in January. The course is coming out now. A couple of other changes on ASFX side, on the internal side, which is good. But... uh. I feel like the the big thing going into the end of the year for me is I, I really want to maximize my Tradeify accounts with Tradeavate and work on copy trading those and max out my payouts as much as I can with Top Step because people are talking more and more about like regulations. I don't know if it's going to be for the SIM accounts or XFA accounts or for live accounts. I don't know what it's going to be. I have no idea. I don't think anybody knows exactly, but I'm just thinking, all right, squeeze, 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 get these payouts coming in as much as we can. You know what I'm saying? So my plan is continue to trade these XFAs I have with Top Step, not having, I don't have any combines or nothing, just run these up, squeeze them. And then Tradeify, I'm going to start copy trading seven of them together, I think is my plan because I have three. So I got to buy four more, but because I'm not super comfortable with the trade of eight copier, I'm going to copy trade just these three together this coming week. See how that goes. If that goes well, I'm going to buy four more and then have all seven and see what I can do. So I found out with the Tradeify, the instant funded account too. I know we were talking about this last week. The uh, consistency rule resets after you take your first payout, the 10 trading days resets and the five days of $100 or whatever the exact rules are. I don't remember off the top of my head. All that resets after you take a payout. So I took the money out and left myself with two grand. Now it all resets. So I got to go grow from the two grand again, which is basically starting at zero. It just looks like a different number. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think at two this... grand, but the consistency is at zero. Basically. The consistency rule says 100%. You have to get it down yeah, yeah. to 20%. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think with, when it comes to like, uh, you know, the regulations and everything, you can't focus on that, bro. Like if you- That's what I'm saying. Panic, you know, panic, that's like sitting there panicking about when you're going to die. <laughs> then you're not going to live. Like just trade- and you adapt when Ooh, it's uh, dropping bombs, Bruce, Bruce, right there. Jeez, that was fire right there, bro. Blew right <laughs> over. That. You're right. You're right. You can't, bro. If I would have been so skeptical of prop firms, I never would have jumped into it. And then we'd be having this conversation because yeah. remember, I saw you were doing it longer than me. And I was like, all right, fine. I got to fucking try it. Then here we are yeah. now. Like, imagine if I still wasn't on the fucking boat. You know what I mean? You would have left me a long time ago. Yeah. You can't do that. You can't just, just trade and adapt just as trade. it comes. And adapt yeah. and that's why like the instant funded thing is really interesting as much as i like top step and they've been good to uh, i think almost everybody it's like if i don't have to take combines and i because i know i can trade well why would i not just do instant funded accounts why would i even worry about combines you know mm -hmm. i think from, from the coaching perspective like with the black shirt club though it's been probably better to have people take combines because they're cheaper than the instant funded accounts because some people are not ready for an instant funded account don't exactly. you think yeah oh, yeah exactly I, I saw it somewhere where someone uh it was like failing combines, failing combines, and then okay, I'll do instant funding instead because then that takes that out. But it's like, but you got to build that up for the that. balance to take the payout. You're probably just going to lose that as well. Yep. Yeah, like it is a good tester of like, okay, I've done that enough times. I've passed them. I've gotten payouts. Maybe you've lost an XFA. That's fine. But it's like you you have a little bit of proof of concept. That's like now I just want to save some time and maybe I'll spend a little bit more. I'll go with the instant. But if you've never passed one, then I guess you could try the instant. But I don't know what you think expectations are that are realistic of like, yeah, what I could do to it. Cause you've never done it before. So just yeah. be your own caution. Yeah. What are you thinking you're going to do? I think I'm going to do this uh, trade of five ones in this week or two. Yeah. Once you uh, tell me a little bit more about them, but it seems like you, you took your payout just Brett, fine. Right? Everything yeah, was. You, I, I connected you with Brett. So you're already good yeah. with that. Yeah. 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 So I'll get those going and then I keep on trading the XFAs. Not that I'm taking off in December by any means. Um, but I feel like just anyone and all of us last year in the BSC, like towards Christmas, like the two weeks into it, it just gets, mm. everyone gets a little bit more maybe relaxed, like setting up for now 2025 of like for January sure. first, like the first week of even January was slow. That like, I don't want to have to hammer it in December. I'd rather be like, I got a good September, right. October, November, right? And then let's go, let's get ready for the next year. What's my plan yeah. for all these accounts? How am I going to scale it? Am I getting new ones? And so hard in December where... I'm just trying to finish the year strong and then enjoy the holidays and then come back in January ready to go. Yeah. Like that whole, I think it's like December. It's like the 21st, the weekends before yeah. Christmas. 
all the way through basically my birthday, which is the fourth, those two weeks are just like nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? People are yeah. always more com comfortable and that's always a good time to like refresh and think about your goals rather than having to stress and trade and try to make money on during yeah. those weeks when it's probably not a good yeah. time to be trading at all. And then we come back in January, right? Pick up the ball for two or three weeks and then we go to Texas and then we spend a week mm -hmm. in Texas, but we're yeah. at least going to be trading in Texas. So like yeah. be prepared to bring your external monitor or whatever you want to do. You know what I mean? I'm, the room is set up so everyone can have like their own trading station. I'm going to tell everyone to bring their own laptops and whatever they want to do mm -hmm. so they can trade. You know what I mean? And we're going to have a big projector screen so they can see my screen and everything. Yeah. The, one of the special guests uh, I'll say on the podcast might be not conf he's interested. We just got to make the dates work. It's Umar from Tradezilla. I told you guys already, but I'll tell the audience yep. that would be sick. I mean, that would be worth the fucking ticket price alone just to talk to Umar for an hour. I think. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just, whatever that, trades he takes there, I'm just trailing him full uh -huh. contracts. <laughs> it, it probably will work. He's he's really he's amazing. And yeah, I yeah, I was like so to speak to him. So grateful that they were willing to sponsor the event, like with no hesitation, bro. I was just like, hey. This is the sponsorship price. This is what you're going to get. He was like 100% in, texted me right away. So that was super cool. So we got them and top one as the sponsors for the event. Uh, got the hotel picked. So yeah, we'll we'll pick up our new year. I feel like that's really where the new year is going to feel like it starts for me. It's like after that event, get back from that event and then get rolling again. You know what I mean? Because that's like two weeks, a week after the new year just starts, you know? So it's like everything's yeah, just The first be week after like January, I guess third, we'll call Like everyone comes in all ready to go, but. Normally it's not like the best that uh, like you do wait till like the seventh or like the tenth. So yep. with that being yep. so close to the event, it might be a, the case of just waiting. Yep. What are you thinking, James? I know you're working on some CFD stuff, the E8 stuff, and some other things. Up update everybody on that. Yeah, I got a couple of uh, challenges running at the moment, trying to get them over the line. So I got yeah E8 Hydra and some FTMO as well. Uh, so yeah, we're got, we're working on that. Um, I think there's still a good few good hand you know handful of CFD. Firms that are pretty decent still, probably like six, I would say. And these are, I always say, so I'll, I'll name them because I think everyone deserves to know what they are. But FTMO, Hydra, Top One, E8, My Funded FX, and Funded Next. Those six, if you stick with those, you're going to be pretty, and maybe funding pips you could add. I've never personally had them in, uh, had taken with them, but you, I've heard good things about them. So those, those six or seven, you know, if, I think you still find, because obviously for guys like me in South Africa, we can't really trade futures. I know a couple of guys that are on ASFX TV actually phoned me this uh, past week saying like, dude, like they've banned South Africans. Like I've been working on this for a while. What am I going to do? I said, bro, you know how to trade, just, just trade the CFD, you know, S&P 500 is in a CFD. Like it's not the 100%. end of the world. Um, so yeah, I think, I think to be honest, I, you know, for me, I think prop firms are the best thing to happen to retail traders because you don't have to lock your money up in an account. You can put it away, you know, into other, other investment uh, avenues, and then you can use the prop firm capital to trade. I think anyone that really hates on prop firms, I think they just haven't actually been exposed to it uh, personally, because I, it's kind of like a no brainer, in my opinion. Especially for new people. Cause most people are, they'll fund their brokerage account and lose money. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So at least here, your There's, losses are yes. much more limited. There's no point. But like you dude, can get a 50 grand account for 100, what, 100 bucks. Why would you put well, in 100 bucks? I mean, for, 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 for $50, you get $2,000 a drawdown. With yeah. Most of these companies, well, it's give or better take, than putting $2,000 like into an account and trying to flip it. You're not going to make, yep. you're not going to make money from that. Exactly. You need substantial exactly. money from it. But bro, that. Let's talk about how much Peter Brandt hates prop firms. Ah. He's gonna he's gonna give himself a heart attack. This guy's so old, he's gonna <laughs> fucking croak over because all he's doing is writing paragraphs, tweeting about yeah. how much he thinks everyone's a scam. C Dakota from Top Step passes series something, and then yeah, you're a I scam. Like, and he just goes off on him, bro. Crazy. Bro, like, and like to to call someone a scam. Like, I understand there are some scammers, but just to outright call someone a yeah, scam, you got to be careful with that word in this business, bro. It's like the c the c word. You know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is. You you can't just go and do that. You know, you can't. You know, you can't do yeah. that. Or or no. see you next Tuesday. Yeah, I'll see you next Tuesday. Yeah, then you get in trouble like me for saying that. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah. No. <laughs> no, no, no. You got in trouble at the golf club because you told them that women shouldn't be allowed to play golf. That's what you said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but it, it's uh it's interesting how close minded some of the older people are to prop firms. But then like some people are not, like Crudelli and uh yeah. Boris, like some of the older guys we've had, you know what I mean? They're not close minded to it at all, you know? Yeah, I think that, you know, just there's, there's different, uh, it's the same thing. Like there's just different ways to making money, bro. Like there's not like, oh, go get a job, get a, you know, or get a degree, get a job and then work. There's right. a lot. You're more saying trade your own money, trade prop money, trade, trade this. It doesn't matter if the bank. Investor if it, capital. If it, 
Yeah, if it works, it works. Like it, it's everyone's different. Like if and if you want to go work for a SMB Capital and make your money doing that, then good for you. It's a different way of doing trading. It, there's honestly no right or wrong way. I think that's yeah. kind of like the main just of like that. I don't know what I agree. AF. Yeah, I think it's also like maybe just those some of the guys that are just maybe not stuck in their ways, but they did it their way and they don't really want it to like evolve like into these new platforms, into this new retail space. So like the ones that do evolve into it, like Cordelli, who is open minded to it, like it's not what he did back then, but he still understands that it's not going to stay the same forever. All this technology, all these computers that we have that to trade from home and as well as not having to use our own capital. Like, yeah, it's just the thing. It's new business ideas that there's going to be new ideas five years from now on top of prop firms that who knows what we'll be trading. But I think it's just the natural evolution of the trading space. Well yep. said. I uh before this the, so this episode is going to go up next Saturday. We're filming it on Sunday. Next episode is with this guy Isaac from Top Step. He has a lot of interesting perspectives on the way to make money from prop firms. So even within this idea, like you said, James, if it works, it works. Even once you get funded, there's so many different ways to work the company that you're funded with for money. I mean, that's why I like doing this podcast because I get to hear people's different perspectives if they've got the proof yep. that they're making money. You get to see not only, okay, this guy's trading this market, but how is he trading this market or how is he trading this prop firm and why? And then I think there's a lot of value to be had in that. You know what he says, Evan? He says, never take a payout on your XFA. That's what he's going to say next week, everybody. He says, keep the XFA building until you get called up to a live account. It gives you a big buffer in the live account. And he explains how that has led to him to basically taking 10K a month every month the last you know year or so. Yeah, it's interesting. It is. So should be a good podcast. That's next Saturday, everybody. So we're, we're on this Saturday drop schedule, but we can, uh, just so everybody knows, we can give you guys a heads up. There's going to be some really interesting guests that are going to branch out of just Forex or just futures as well, trying to get options traders, more prop firm owners, things like that. So you guys can really see behind the curtain. So make sure you guys are subscribed here on the podcast. You know, really today, the goal was to get you guys updated on things that are going on in our lives, right? James with the baby, yeah. I know I, we mentioned you're streaming on Edgeful now. You're streaming on ASFX TV now. So you got a lot of stuff going on. Evan's running the streams with me during the afternoon. So it's all coming together here really nicely, everybody. But the main thing that's coming is the event in Dallas and the Futures 2.0. Those are our two big things. Futures 2.0 is out now. The tickets are on sale now if you guys want to join us in Dallas. But for now, boys, first home team episode in a year is in the books. We're going to have to do this more often. I think we have to make it more regular. Maybe we'll try to do it like once a month. If the people tell us in the comments they really like the home team episodes and see how many people stay through till the end and everything. If they really like it, we could do these once a month and just drop them like on Wednesdays, midweek or whatever, like a random, you know what I mean? Extra podcast kind of thing. So, but I appreciate it. It is crazy. It is crazy. I feel like it's probably because either we've all streamed together at one point in the past year right. that it feels like we've done this before yep. or just... In our meetings every morning, James says the same stuff that like women shouldn't be able to vote and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. It's, it's the, the same, same story, so we're all used like, to it now, right? Yeah, it's like it's it like all feels podcast, the same. meeting, like no, it's all... definitely because we stream so much. We're we've traded yeah. together so much, so it, we forget that we haven't done yeah. these podcasts. But I've also had a lot of people that want to come on the show, and I've had some people, you know, that are not in our circle of influence, and that's cool too because I, I want to get that. I want to expand the reach, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, boys. <laughs> pending it from here. Bruce, thanks for the time on the weekend. I appreciate it. Ev, thanks for getting up early. I know 10 o'clock is a little early for you on a Sunday. Make sure you make it to church. Say your prayers for the Yankees. Make sure you... Oh, uh... <laughs> By the time this no. is out, the results are... I'm living out. in forward time, Ev. I'm living in forward time. I already went to church this morning. God told me the Yankees have no hope. <laughs> exactly. So, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you very much. Make sure you're subscribed. Link down below for Futures 2.0. Link down below for tickets to the event in Dallas, if there are any left at the time of this going up. But for now, like I said, thank you. And we'll see you next week for another episode. Peace.